Hi. Hello. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm I'm going. I'm going to give it one more shot because I swear to God, it it it, it did though. Unfortunately, um, I don't have anything set up to show up on screen, and I really should. I should get those sorted. Um, if that's if you're on your phone, mimic that's happened to me, and I had to like leave and rejoin a stream when that happened. Uh, I have no meds to take, but I, I appreciate it. And that's, that's, that's a sound out to, to everyone in chat. If you got meds, fucking take them. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to hope and pray that that was a weird issue caused by the sheer amount of horse shit that I needed to do in constantly closing and reopening Nancy, because I swear to God, I played for a long stretch doing tests yesterday, and everything, everything ran perfect. And then I played like five hours of Elden Ring, the other game that was causing those crashes, and it had no problems. So dear God, please. Have mercy on my soul. <laughs> okay, instead of instead of risking with constantly opening and closing it, I'm gonna I'm gonna close it once. And I'm going to make the tweak to fix the, the, the overscan. And then, and then everyone will pay. Okay. All right. All right. You've got to be. <sighs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Load game. The motorboat. I fixed the motorboat. The motorboat is fixed. It's a fixed motorboat. I'm gonna demonstrate two haha -ha funnies. Girl detective drowns in the lake while investigating mysterious occurrences. An unused life jacket was found in her boat. It probably would have saved her, said Park Ranger. If you don't pick up the goddamn life vest, you drown. Okay. When the game first crashed, I was about to deliver it unto you the curse that Jesus Christ, this character looks like Hillary Clinton and I hate it. Hey there, welcome to M's Emporium. I'm Emily Griffin. 
My name's Nancy Drew. I'm staying out at the old Malone place. You know, the house Sally McDonald bought. Now what's she doing inviting guests out to that old dump? As it turns out, I'm there by myself. The dog scared her off. I told her. I said, Sally, that old house is going to be nothing but trouble. And sure enough, Malone's hounds have come back. Just when we all thought they were finally resting in peace. Have you ever seen the dogs? Nope. Don't want to, neither. Just hearing them howl's bad enough. Scares the bejeebies out of me. Huh. When was the last time they appeared? Seems like they show up every time somebody buys the place. So the last time would have been a 10, 15 years ago. I caught a strange man prowling around last night. He called himself Red Knot. <laughs> the bird watcher. Comes in every so often to stock up on that weirdo food he eats. You know how them tree hugger types are. Fucking liberal. It seemed to me that he was more into watching birds than hugging trees. Yeah, well, whatever. One thing's for sure. He's gonna wind up with a dose of buckshot in his hind end if and he keeps tramping through people's yards making noises like he just popped out of a UFO. A UFO? Mr. Knott did me a favor, and in return he asked me to pick up a cassette player from you. Oh, yeah. I got it right here. Thought maybe the old coot had forgotten he left it here. What else can I do you for? I need to get the water from Sally's well tested. How would I go about doing that, do you know? Just get a water testing kit from the ranger station and follow the directions. Where's the ranger station? Just up lake from Sally's on the east side. Why would there be a problem with the water? Cause it's well water. And seeing as Malone dug that well 80 years ago, what gets pumped out of it could be pretty funky. Where do you find your... Uh, uh, Bless you. It's all the dust. Sometimes I think it grows on this stuff. Well, will answer the question. Some of those old bottles are beautiful. Where'd you get them? Found them. See, back in the days of Prohibition, that old Malone place used to be Party Central. Only way to get to and from back then was by boat. And when those boats dumped, on account of bad weather or bad driving or the feds suddenly showing up, while well, everything from diamond necklaces to full bottles of illegal booze sank to the bottom of the lake. So, it's finders keepers, huh? That's right. See, recovering objects from the lake bed is illegal. According to Squeaky Wheel Acres, dragging the lake for artifacts was upsetting its delicate eco-balance. So thanks mostly to his constant squawking, the state banned it. Squeaky Wheel Acres? Jeff Acres, local park ranger. I keep telling him all this stuff washed up on shore. But does that snobby little stickler for rules believe me? So he got the grease? Sounds like you aren't real fond of Ranger Acres. Jeff Acres could take all his precious rules and regulations and take a flying leap. Now I got nothing against getting more customers in here, mind you. But I kind of like Moon Lake the way it is. Small, quiet, out of the way. But Jeff Akers, why there's nothing he'd like better than to see all the lake and all the property around it turned into one big, noisy, jam-packed state park. I... Now, I'm just a simple... <laughs> a simple SoCal and now Washington cow. Um, but... Are state parks known for... For being noisy and jam-packed? Is that a thing? I'm assuming someone who's not me might know better. Hmm. Fair enough. Why would he want that? He's the type of guy who likes to boss people around. Makes him feel important. Yeah, I know. So he's if a the cop. park got way bigger and was crawling with tourists, why instead of giving out maybe one ticket for littering every two days, he'd be giving out one dozen tickets every two hours. He'd be in heaven. Well, hey, I'm sure you got better things to do than getting your ear chewed off by yours truly.
I need to buy something. You want it? I got it. As long as you pay cash, that is. That's just it. I'm running kind of low on cash. Would it be possible to start a line of credit? My daddy always said, neither a borrower nor a lender be. But I'll tell you what, seeing as how you're a friend of Sally's, and seeing as how I got some things around here that could use doing, I guess we could work something out. What is it you need? Do you sell sandpaper by any chance? I do, but Mr. Birdbrain was in last week and cleaned me out. Said he was tired of that observation platform of his giving him splinters in his hinter regions. Great. I'm so glad that Knott's not getting poked in the ass anymore. I've disturbed him enough already. Would anyone else around here have some? He's your only hope. But you better ask him for it quick. That deck of his is pretty big, and those squares I sold him are pretty small. <laughs> Red Knot's deck is fucking massive. There's a large tree blocking Sally's driveway. Do you know of anyone who can come out and clear it away? I'll get Tucker Davis to take care of it. Gotta warn you, though. Tucker tends to do things in his own sweet time. Guess I'll see you later. You betcha. Special offer, live bait, five for four dollars. For my own paranoia, I'm just gonna. <laughs> Moon Lake Fishing, Wall of Fame. See what happens when you buy M's bait. Come here to Ames Emporium. Our 100th customer award. Auntie E.B. and her nice bass. Her supple bass. Best catch award. A lifetime supply of Ems live bait for Amelia G Gavernovich and her northern pike. Bobby Rivers with a black trout. Billy Sanderson with a smallmouth bass. Mac... Mac Hubbardchick? With a trophy bass. Jonathan Kai with a nice trout. Nice trout. Buy a piece of the past. 80 years ago, Moon Lake was crawling with gangsters, flappers, and jazz musicians from the big city. They traveled to and from parties by boat and were so rich that if they accidentally dropped something in the lake, they wouldn't even bother going after it. Each of the items you see here was fished by legal means out of Moon Lake and most likely belonged to some wealthy big shot. Don't go home without buying at least one genuine artifact from the Roaring Twenties, M's Emporium. Skunk Dexing. Fishing license here. No hunting. XA. M. Benson Aviation. Millie gets you there. Cow! Huh, guess that's it for now. I think it's all here. Howdy, Nancy. I want to get at the video rentals. I want to see what sort of horse shit they invented. Guess I'll see you later. I guess you will. Station Moon Lake State Park. That's a persona. I'm not gonna look too closely at a lot of these. I'll do it when I know I need to be hunting for information.
I might maybe be half nib nibbling at a bagel. So don't don't want to poke at too much stuff I got to read yet. Hello, can I help you? I'm Nancy Drew. I'm visiting the woman who bought the old Malone place, Sally McDonald. Do you know her? Sally McDonald? Yes. I've had occasion to write her up once or twice. Fucking cop. What do you mean, write her up? She littered. Food items, as I recall. An apple core, crust of bread, something like that. She tried to argue that the animals would eat them, but litter is litter. And besides, feeding the wildlife is also illegal. Sounds like you take your job very seriously. Being a park ranger can be a thankless job, Ms. Drew. But I know that every time I enforce a rule, I'm helping to preserve some plant or animal, however minute, for future generations of park goers. Mm hmm What do you know about the pack of dogs that's been terrorizing Sally? They've scared her so bad that she's gone to her aunt's in Philadelphia. Don't tell me she believes all that ghost dog stuff. Does that mean you don't? There's always a logical explanation for everything. Whatever's out there, I'm sure they're no more and no less than exactly what they look and sound like. Dogs. Living, breathing, very noisy, dogs. Any idea what would make a dog's eyes glow yellow? Something in their diet, maybe? Some oddball vitamin or protein. As a park ranger, don't you want to know for sure what's behind these dog attacks? Do you always ask this many questions? Sorry, it's my nature. But would it be okay if I asked a few more? I'm a very busy man, Ms. Drew, but... <sighs> I am here to serve the public. Oh boy, I hope you're ready for questions, you fuck. Got a million of them. Do you have something I could use to test the well water at Sally's? Sure do. Simple to use, too. Just pump some water into this vial, return the sample to me, I'll send it off, and in a day or two, you'll find out whether or not your water's fit to drink. Does everyone out here have a well? <laughs> everyone who doesn't want to die of thirst does. Hooking up to a municipal water supply is out of the question. Too expensive. This place isn't exactly your ordinary ranger station, is it? It's also the Moon Lake Post Office, and it's the unofficial Moon Lake Museum of Factual and Natural History. I've lived here all my life, so I can't help but feel obligated to protect not only the area's flora and fauna, but also its past. Which is apparently rather colorful. As a member of the law enforcement community, I prefer to dwell on the positive aspects of history instead of on the activities of a bunch of glorified thugs. Uh-huh. So you'd probably like to see the old Malone place torn down and forgotten. Not necessarily. It's hard to ignore its potential as a tourist attraction. Whoops. And if that's what it takes to draw more people to Moon Lake, hmm, I'm a reasonable man. As an officer of the law, can you think of anyone who might want to scare Sally off her property? The woman who owns the shop across the lake? Emily Griffin? I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure she's been dragging the lake in front of Malone's house for artifacts, which is illegal. It would be a lot easier for her to do her dirty work if nobody was living there. Would it be okay if I looked around? Please do. And if you have any questions, any more questions, just ask. Would you mind mailing this letter for me? Not at all. Okay. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Oh, and one last thing. The deer mouse population has boomed this year, so please take precautions if you're cleaning out any area where they may have nested. They can carry some nasty diseases. Thanks for the tip, Ranger Acres. How old is this tree? Did you know that the growth rings on a tree indicate its age and the environmental conditions in which it grew? This cross-section is a reproduction of a pine tree that was 62 years old when it was cut down. 
Please note that the large size of the display does not reflect the actual width of a 62-year-old pine. 1934, a pine seedling. 1939, broad, evenly spaced rings indicate healthy growth. 1944, growth disparity occurs. 1954, although the tree is growing straight again, narrow rings indicate compensa competition for sunlight, nutrients from other trees. A burn scar, 1960, a burn scar from a uh, fire that quickly scorched the forest. 1957, rapidly, rapid growth begins again, probably due to the removal of neighboring trees. 1972, a prolonged drought cut in the area causes narrow growth rings. 1987, these narrow rings are the result of a sa uh, sawfly insect in infestation. A sawfly larvae consumed conifer buds and needles. Neat. Dog? Dog, where dog? I want to pet dog. I want to pet a dog. Don't fuck with me, man. <laughs> you fucking pig, where's the dog? <sighs> Civilian Conservation Corps. In 1932, when the United States was in the throes of the Great Depression, presidential candidate Franklin D. Roosevelt was recognized that the country was facing two very serious problems. Its natural resources are rapidly being destroyed by soil erosion, de deforestation, and thousands of able-bodied men were unemployed and desperately looking for work. So when he was elected, Roosevelt immediately compelled Congress to pass the Emergency Conservation Work Act. It called for establishment of a peacetime army of men who, from station at various camps throughout the country, would undertake work projects that would save and revitalize the nation's forests while allowing the men to earn much-needed paychecks. By the end of 1935, this army, called the Civilian Conservation Corps, had been successfully mobilized and was hard at work. Hard at work. Half a million enrollees were stationed at 2,650 camps, which were located in all 48 states, as well as the territories of Hawaii and Alaska. The men undertook projects ranging from building the roads and fire towers to st uh, stringing telephone lines to planting billions of trees. When the CCC was abolished in 1942, it had left its mark on every state in the nation. Hold on. Hold, hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. 1932. Abolished in 1942. Wow. Took only 10 years for them to, for them to fucking immediately back down on that concept. The importance of its role in the development of recreational facilities. Uh... And national, state, country, uh, county, and metropolitan parks throughout the country cannot be understated. The building in which you're now sitting is a testament to the dedication and determination of Roosevelt's tree army. A CCC train transporting supplies. Wow, and trains? I probably shouldn't mess around with this without Ranger Acre's permission. Why not? It's, it's an info card box, presumably next to the computer to look up information. It's not locked. Park and wildlife information. Poison ivy. Learn to identify poison ivy plant, and you will have taken the first step in avoiding poison ivy. The popular saying, leaves of three, beware of me, is it? Well, can't read further. That is back me out. You can prevent the misery of poison ivy by looking for the, uh, by looking out for the plant. When you are outdoors, you can destroy these weeds with herbicides. Good roll for poison ivy in your backyard. Who is sensitive? Some people are very sensitive to poison ivy. They can develop a severe rash with blisters and extreme swelling. Such severe cases need medical treatment. Hantavirus. There are several types of hantaviruses, but hantavirus pulmonary syndrome can cause acute respiratory failure and death. Yay! The rodent most likely to transmit the disease to humans is the deer mouse. See, deer mouse. A uh, deer mouse infected with a hantavirus does not appear or act sick. Infection occurs when tiny particles from deer mouse saliva, urine, and droppings containing the, containing the virus are kicked up into the air, a process called aerosolization, and inhaled. That is a fun fact. Thank you, Mimic. Uh... 
uh, symptoms. Early signs of HPS can occur anywhere from one to five weeks after exposure. Fatigue, fevers, muscle aches, your mouse. Headaches, chills, abdominal problems. How to avoid HPS. Avoid these areas and take precautions when cleaning them. Never sweep an area inhabited by mice as sweeping would stir up particles which could then be inhaled. Oh, hi, Floof. The Floofy. Welcome. Wear a respiratory mask and rubber gloves and thoroughly wet down the area with a bleach and water solution. Nine parts water, one part bleach. Remove dirt from the area with a damp towel, mop, or sponge. Double bag with cleaning materials before disposing of them. <clears throat> Giardiasis. Oh, I'm sorry. Pronounced Giardiasis. Or beaver fever. Hmm. Beaver fever is an illness caused by a parasite, Giardia, that lives in the intestines of people and animals. These hard-celled cysts are expelled in the environment and the waste matter infected animals or humans and stay in the soil until they contaminate a food source and are accidentally ingested, or until they are carried into streams, rivers, lakes, or recreational bodies of water, such as pools and hot tubs. Great! Great! Symptoms usually occur one to two weeks after the parasite is ingested. Diarrhea, abdominal cramp, stomach upset. In healthy people, these symptoms do usually disappear on their own in, uh, after about a month. Tips! A GR diasis is very contagious, but is preventable by washing hands thoroughly with soap and water before eating or handling food and after using the toilet. Never drink untreated water from streams or lakes when hiking or camping, and always wash and or peel raw fruits and vegetables that may have come in contact with contaminated soil or water. If you must use water that you suspect contains Giardia, heat the water to a rolling, uh, rolling boil for at least one minute, or filter it using a filter that has been NSF rated for cyst removal. Lyme disease. Named after Lyme, Connecticut, where a cluster of arthritis cases in 1977 led to identification of the disease, is an infection caused by bacterium carried by deer ticks. The spring and summer months, uh, May through November, pose the greatest risks of infection. Deer tick. Wait. Spring, summer. I mean, through November, isn't that a good chunk of the way through autumn as well? My memory of stuff doesn't fucking work. Uh, deer ticks flourish in wooded, bushy, brushy, or ga grassy areas where the animals, rodents, deer, and birds on which they feed are abundant. Early symptoms of Lyme disease, fever, fatigue, chills, headaches, muscles, and joint aches. Most victims will also develop a distinctive rash that resembles a bullseye. Prevention tips. Wear light-colored clothing so you can see ticks and knock them away before they can attach to your skin. Always wear a long sleeve shirt and tuck the bottoms of your pants into your socks or boots. Inspect your kin skin carefully after every outing, and if you find any ticks, remove them by grasping them with a pair of tweezers, then pulling with a firm, steady motion, and washing the area with antiseptic. See your doctor immediately if you develop any symptoms of Lyme disease. Yay, I got something! Oh, thank you for the follow, Clue. Also, no worries. I hope whatever's going on with your eyesight is like... <laughs> okay, I, I guess is what I mean. Hope your eyes aren't rotting out of your head or, you know. It's up to the people using our nation's parks and forest lands to prevent forest fires. While some fires are started by lightning, the most... Huh. My start bar briefly disappeared, and I was panicking about that it was another crash. While some fires are started by lightning, the most devastating fires tend to be started by human carelessness. Use common sense. No smoking allowed anywhere on park grounds. Fireworks and firearms of any kind are strictly prohibited. Campfires are, not al are allowed in the park, but only in designated areas. No fires allowed on park beaches at any time. Don't let one minute of, care don't let one minute of carelessness destroy what it took nature decades to create. Save. Paranoia about the crashes. Uh, I'll look at the 
this one. This one's easy. Hey, kids, check out Moon Lake's nature highlight. Chipmunk, gray squirrel, eastern tiger swallowtail, dame's rocket. What? <laughs> wow, she's so hot. Have you seen her dame's rocket? White-tailed deer, skunk, trout, otter, great blue heron, buttercup, red-tailed hawk. I'm not fucking looking at that giant wall of text yet. You're back. Okay. Thanks I for all your help. The That's why I'm here. Box. The ninja into a card box. So as of right now, I need to find pictures of birds. Um, oh, did I say it was weird? Sounds like something I'd say without thinking. Uh, I need to ask fucking Red Knot for, um... Here, birdie, birdie, birdie! Oh. Hey, listen, it's normal to be gender weird. It rules, actually. But I appreciate the sentiment. Okay, um, so there's that. I gotta test the water. Oh, right. I've got my PDA. <laughs> God. Test the water pump. Uh, Jeff Baker's. Deer mice wear gloves and masks around their nest. Well, I have a mask, so I'm probably going to interact with them. Or, I... No, I don't have a mask. I have... I have gloves. Clover! Uh... Try to find the... Try to find the birds and take pictures. Get a square of sandpaper from red. Upward motors, making weird noises. Okay, I fixed that. Red, let me spark plug and see if take some pictures from them. Listen to the birds on the tape he gave me, and then take photos of them. Seems simple enough, I hope. Should explore the shed near the house and take everything that's useful in there. Alright, most of that stuff I've already done. So... Oh, right, I think I have to take the cassette to him. To, uh, get it working or whatever. So, let's make it nighttime. You find all the birds? I'm sorry, but finding those birds is harder than I thought it would be. Can you give me any tips? You gotta look for them. This isn't gonna be any Sunday picnic, you know? And try early in the morning. That's when most of them are singing. Most of them are singing. I'm sorry to keep bugging you, but I need some sandpaper. Emily said you might have some. Here, take it and scram. I was just about to call in a meadowlark. That was always Ruth's favorite. Was Ruth your wife? Good heavens, no. My wife had no patience for birding. Ruth was my dog. Border Collie. She'd hear a metal arc, and by golly, her dog. ears would perk, and she'd cock her head, and she'd just come as close to smiling as ever a dog could. Dog. This is a very dog-heavy game. The ranger has a dog somewhere. There are ghost dogs. This guy had a dog. 
I guess it's I guess it's really a like in memoriam of dog game, which is kind of sad. Do many people around here own dogs? Not really. Most people don't bother. The place is surrounded by park land, and Ranger Acres just loves enforcing the leash laws. There it is again. Take your sandpaper and go sand something, okay? Okay. It's stuck. I don't actually know if that's what I need to do. Nancy, Nancy Drew, where are you? Da -da 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 -da. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I guess actually what I should do is get some water drawn to test. I'd better wait until daylight. Oh, right. There's also that maze of trees back here I need to explore at some point. Would you like to give me a hint as to what's wrong? Hmm. Hmm. Pump's not working. See if Ranger States has information on how to fix or prime a pump. Okay. It would be nice if she had said something, but fair enough. Okay, third call. Oh, right, I guess I had a cassette, but I didn't put into it yet. American Goldfinch. Northern Cardinal. Red-tailed hawk. Western Tanager. Why are you being so quiet, Red? Okay. I think this maze is where a lot of the birds are, so. I better be careful. No birds here. Just a lock. Oh. Very kind of you, game. How do I... Ah. She's so beautiful. Crow, crow.
must have scared it. What? Well, what could I have done? Do that. Oh, the graveyard. Waldo Matthias, born August 5th, 1876, died May 10th, 1925. Snooky, our beloved dog, 1918 to 1928. Goodness, Oma Pearl, born October 13th, 1789, died January 18th. 1865. Pippin Path, Cedric Conzo Cranky, born April 5th, 1813, died uh, June 21st, 1889. Looks like. Stench! Asa Royal. Marbles, we're so sorry to have lost you. Oh, hey! Born February 8th, 1824, died January 29th, 1932. Xander, born August 16th, 1923, died January 29th, 1923. Lucy, April 4th, 1922, January 29th. Wow, they. It, they all died together, huh? That's weird. Huh. Iggy, born November 11th, 1919. Never forget, died January 29th, 1932. These look like dog tracks. Wouldn't you know it? I must have scared it. Hmm. Let's see if going back to the graveyard and back set it. A camera. Can you just need to wait a minute? Oops, can't take a picture without a camera. Oops. I must have scared it. Probably something I need to ask Red about. Then. Whoops. That's not the way.
Okay, back out. Uh, hit up Ranger Station. Find out about the pump. Not mean to click that. You're back. Can I ask about the pump? What do you know about the cemetery behind the Malone house? People are buried there. Beyond that, what's to know? Is Malone buried there? That's the rumor. The inscription on one of the tombstones reads Waldo Matthias. Does that name ring any bells? Not in my steeple. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. <laughs> dog! Oh, dog! Horrid 3D rendered dog, but that's fine. Even a horrid dog is a beautiful dog. You're back. I noticed you have a dog. <laughs> that's Yogi. Who never goes out unless he's on a leash. Park rules. He seems very well trained. I hope you're not suggesting I trained Yogi to run around in the middle of the night barking and attacking houses. My guy, I was complimenting your dog. Fucking chill. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. Ah, time to pump. Shallow well pumps, which can lift water over a maximum of 25 feet at sea level, operate on the same principles as drinking straw. The action of the pump sucks air out of the intake or drop pipe and then extends down into the well water, and when a partial vacuum is created, air pressure does the rest, pushing water up in the, up the intake pipe and out the spout of the pump. When a pump seems to stop working, that is, when it fails to suck any water up and it out the spout, no matter how many times the handle is pumped, it probably needs to be primed. To prime a pump, simply pour potable, drinkable water into the top of it and pump the handle until the water flows from the spout. It's a good idea to fill a container with water right away and keep it nearby so you'll have water the next time the pump needs priming. A pump needs to be primed because built into the pump is a cylinder throughout which runs a plunger. One end of the plunger is attached to the pump handle, the other end is attached to a valve, which opens when the handle is raised and closes. Um. And closes when the handle is pushed down. The sides of the valve, its leathers, must be wet in order to create enough of a seal with the edge of the cylinder to pull the air out of the intake pipe and allow it to pressure to force water up the pipe into the cylinder and out the spout. The longer the pump goes without being used, the drier these leathers will become. Of course, in time, these valve or cup leathers will eventually wear out and have to be replaced. Well water should be tested at least once a year to make sure that no chemicals or disease causing, disease causing microbes will have contaminated the water. See wells and well water. Well, well, well. White tailed deer. Peregrine falcon. Wood ducks. Red squirrel. Moonlight during fall. Another spectacular moonlight sunset. Yeah, that kind of rules. Also, is horrifying, but like badass. Moonlight Glowworm. Okay. I gotta get water from the water store. Howdy, Nancy. Any word from Tucker, what's his name? He hasn't been by to move that tree yet. I'll give him another call. But like I said, the man marches to the beat of another drummer. A very slow drummer. Does the name Waldo Matthias mean anything to you? Hmm. I can't say as it does. 
These so-called ghost dogs left very real paw prints. I saw some near the cemetery that's by the Malone house. Have you ever been there? <laughs> Can't say as I have. Poking around cemeteries ain't exactly a hobby with me. Guess I'll see you later. Keep on trucking. Okay, there's probably like bottled water in the house then. Tree down. Cut it while it's down. Cut it while it's down. Cut it while it's down. I don't need water right now. Wait! What? You, you fucking bitch! Thought I had to pick it up and then combine it with the pads. Okay. Alright, go deliver this and I'll come back out at night. I don't need water right now, face it. You're back. I have that water sample. What do I do with it? Just give it to me, and I'll take care of it. Where's Yogi? In the run, out back. Even out of sight, he's under my full control, as park rules require. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. I probably shouldn't mess around with this without Ranger Acre's permission. Um. Pop back out at night time. You find all the birds? I found some birds, but no matter how quiet I am, I've been scaring other birds away before I can take their picture. What am I doing wrong? You're wearing those clothes. That's what you're doing wrong. You need to blend in, like me. Go back over to M's tacky tourist trap and get yourself some camouflage gear. Oh. Only sensible thing that money grubber carries. See you in a while. Shh, down a notch. Remember. Can I go wandering into the maze at night? Yes. There are probably at least some birds that'll only be out here uh, at night. Hopefully not any that oh. Oh I fucking no scoped that. Didn't need the camouflage, so this will be really silly.
Okay, nightmare. Or daytime. Whatever, same thing really. Howdy, Nancy. To make a long story short, I need some camouflage gear. Got some right over here. One size fits all. Oh, but God. I'm running kind of low on bait. So if you go out and get me, oh, say a dozen little critters, I'll give you the camos. A dozen little critters? Worms, spiders, beetles, grubs. Anything Ooh. that wriggles on its belly will do. Just look under stuff. Rocks, logs, dead leaves. Should be able to find 12 in no time. Do I need some kind of permit? Things ain't quite that bad around here. At least not yet. Now, if Jeff Aker's daddy was still around, you might get arrested for cruelty to animals or some such nonsense. Joe Aker's used to be the deputy sheriff. Real critter lover that one was. Okay. Ma'am, you give off bad vibes. Joe Aker's is Jeff's father? That's right. Guess I'll see you later. Keep on trucking. Joe Akers didn't want nobody saying any slurs. Those look too rotten. I think for some fucking bugs. really use bait much? Because once again I know nothing. Really? I can't check under the shoe? That seems like an obvious place, but alright.
and that's the way out. Um, <clears throat> right, that's just a shield. And it wasn't the way out anyway. Uh, I swear I saw one more worm under like this one. Damn. Missed it. Miss pal. A camera. All right, looks like I've cleaned it out. Can I do anything this time? Nope. Stump is bugless. <laughs> Very expensive bugless. Honestly, at this point, I'm trying to remember if there is... If, um... There are any Nancy Drew games that don't heavily rely on her powers of voluntary narcolepsy. Yes, it is. The thing is, in most of the games, she has to set an alarm clock. And while one could argue that perhaps the alarm clock is the time travel device, uh, there are completely different clocks depending on where she's staying. Clock, there was a second... Okay, hold on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Wait. Thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, that's twelve. I'm just going to assume that's accurate and regret leaving early if it isn't. Got a 
gonna say, uh, this one's more than I'd say, um, a lot of them, aside from perhaps maybe Scarlet Hand, this one's very busy work based. Also, before I forget, I should do this. So the thing is, the thing about that is, um, I forget. Oh well, gives up instantly. Nancy, how's the bait finding coming along? Twelve big, fat, juicy ones, just like you wanted. Well, now, you done all right for a city gal. Here you go. Hope whatever you're hiding <laughs> from won't catch you. <laughs> How you holding up? <laughs> Guess I'll see you later. Keep on trucking. Sure. Sure, why not? I don't possess the knowledge to deny you this claim. Unless I can only accept it blindly, naively. With a heart full of open-minded wonder. All the birds. Huh. Okay. Maybe it has to be the crack ass of dawn.
American Goldfinch. Found that one. American Robin. Found that one. Blue Jay. Northern Cardinal. Uh -huh. Red tailed hawk. Haven't gotten a picture of a hawk. Western Tanager. I think the hawk's what I'm missing. And I haven't heard its song anywhere. I think when it shows up might be a scripted point in the game. Going off really vague memories though. Someday I'll remember how to navigate this piece of shit forest. Fuck. Okay. See if I have to ask him to find out where to find a hawk. Oh, right, this way. What? Red? It's not safe to take the boat out at night. Have some torque. Oh, didn't realize I could do that. Oh. Okay. I think I might be able to patch over the rotten floorboard. Looks legit. Wow. Great job, Nancy. Button floorboards, lucky step. What did that accomplish for me? Fuck if I know. Alright, so there's this. Puzzle. Alright, so I need a poem. Leaves that appear on fresh spring tree make my birth different from the other three. When 
Swan strip by on shimmering blue. I'm the one who plays in the summer dew. When the autumn uh, call brings out the fear, it is I who howls on mornings clear. And when the winter comes, birds take flight. Look to me to sleep through the long gray nights. All right, so I'm guessing each dog had a different birthday. I'm gonna go out and find, or maybe I wrote notes down because I looked at all the things in my notes. Find bait for Emily to exchange for camouflage gear. I guess detective work isn't all that glamorous. Wah. Okay. Alright. Alright, so Lucy was born in spring. Looks like leaves are what I need to make it show. One of those was not a tree before, so that one must have been Lucy. When swans drift by on shimmering blue, I'm going to play Summer Dew. So swans, deer, birds. Okay. Now I can just quick reference it using my phone. Alright, so... Xander is the next one to worry about. Xander should be swam. Okay, so right one, right one will be Xander then. Arf, arf. Okay, swans. Next is Iggy, who needs to be deer, which I think. All right, so I can leave Iggy alone. Iggy's in the right position. It's way too dark down there. Damn, I'll need a flashlight.
Okay. Off to M's and Parium and Tor again. Oh, also I should check in with, uh, with Yeah. You're back. Have you gotten the results back from that water sample I left with you? I meant to call the Department of Health today for a status report, but frankly, I've been way too busy. How long have you been the Lone Ranger here, as it were? Six long, very frustrating years. If I were in charge of just ten more acres of parkland, they'd give me an assistant, and I could devote more time to the acquisition of more land and eventually put Moon Lake on the map as one of the biggest, most popular parks in the state. Ah, so you want to be rich and get richer. Why didn't the Parks Department buy the Malone property instead of Sally? She outbid them, the cheapskates. Well, if those dogs scare Sally away for good, other people are bound to think twice about buying the place. The bank will lower its price, and you'll have your land. You're insinuating things again, Miss Drew. I didn't mean to insult you. In fact, is there anything I can do to help you out? Tell you what. If you're serious about making amends, there's some boxes by the computer labeled with dates. They're from the estate of a local history buff. She kept everything from newspaper clippings to old photos to recipes for apple crisp. She put everything in envelopes, then numbered them by year using Roman numerals. Just put the envelopes in oh, order by year. Oh, baby, with I got the this covered. In front. Oh, and if you're rusty on Roman numerals, no, I'm good. there's an entry on them in the computer. Unless they get above where Final Fantasy is, then I'll need to double check. Okay, if I read what's in the envelopes? Don't go reading anything until you're through. Or take my word for it, you'll never get finished. I've been trying to take pictures of birds for this guy named Red Knot. Ever met him? Oh yes, the bird man. I'd stay away from him if I were you. Why? Is something wrong with him? He's a fanatic. He's got it in his head that Moon Lake would be the best bird-watching venue in the world except for one thing. Too many people. Believe me, if there was a way to get this park shut down and all the homes on the lake torn down, he'd do it in an instant. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Let's see. Jeff said the envelope with okay, the earliest up date M's goes down C's, in the front so of each box. <laughs> Shameful. Wait, where did it say? Hold on. What do you say the thing about Roman numerals was? You're back. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've been having to struggle with Red Knot's existence for a while. Well, I'm not immediately seeing where they're listed on the computer. So, I'll just pull something up on my phone. Alright, this is simple. Ish. M is a thousand, D is five hundred, the C is one hundred, L wait, M is a thousand. L is fifty. Okay. So ignore the M's. Okay, this is actually easier than I thought because it's like it, it's just everything's gonna be MCM. Jeez. 
So, the important thing is to remember L. L is 50, and that's the one that I'm not used to seeing that's relevant. And I guess there's C's here. Likely to be over here. MCM four. Eight. Sixty. Thirty two. Yeah, that belongs in here. Seventy. MCM fourteen. Wap Sarah. MCM 13, MCM 8, X8, uh, MCM 18, MCM 61, I think. Oh, MCM 11. Alright, alright, here's... Wait, that's 15, that doesn't go here. Uh, MCM 8. Okay. This end will be easy. Done. 1913 to 1919. 18, 14, 17. That's 60. That doesn't belong in here. Uh. Twenty-five, fifteen. Okay. Nineteen, that's going to be the last anywhere around it. Thirteen, fourteen, eighteen. Fourteen, fifteen, eighteen. Okay. Nineteen twenty through nineteen forty five. So L's should not be showing up here, I think. Yeah. Hold on, what would XC Okay, so XC seven, that's the that's the seventies. LXX is also 70. XLI. Okay, that's 41. Okay. 25. LX. It's LX again. LX is 60. Well, that doesn't go here. Fuck. Um, 
245. Okay, XLV is 45. Would not have guessed that. So. Okay. Oh. Okay. So. 25. 39, 32. 25, 32, 39. LI is 41. And XLB is 45. Okay. All right. All right. Three columns done. 51, 51, 51, 51, 51, 51, 51, 51, 51, 51, 51, 51, 51, 51, 51, Let's see. 98. It's definitely going to be near the top. L, LX. LX itself is 60. Okay, well, that's 69. That's. 70? Yes. L I. That's fifty one. Fifty one sixty. Sixty nine. L six. L X X. Seventy. And. Huh. Unless I'm mistaken, I think this is right. Nineteen hundred, nineteen oh four, nineteen oh eight, nineteen ten, nineteen eleven, nineteen fourteen, nineteen fifteen. Oh, nineteen thirteen. Okay, 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 okay. No excuse there. That I just should have known. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 25, 32, 39. 25, 32, 39. XLI. That's 41. And XLI is 45, so that's right. LI, 51, 60. 6970 XCV Okay, hold on. Roman numerals XCV 7 97 Shouldn't? I think this is all right then. Hmm. It's not telling me something, so I'll just cross check with an answer key. Oh, okay, okay. So here's the thing. Uh, I am right. I forgot how these would be ordered. Uh, lowest to highest is bottom to top. Now that they're all sorted, I can do some reading. Okay, feel pretty good about that. The 
Belfant Star, War Tales. Philadelphia Mobster Dies in Leavenworth, February 13th, 1941. Michael Mickey Malone died yesterday of liver failure in the Federal Penitentiary of Leavenworth, Kansas, at the age of 52. Born in Newark, New Jersey in 1889, Malone owned and operated in Philadelphia Duds and Suds, a chain of laundromats and dry cleaners that allowed him to disguise and disperse the money he made as a racketeer. Compared to other gangsters, Malone kept a relatively low profile. His desire for privacy was enforced by four large dogs who never left his side. Although he was rumored to be involved in everything from rum running to gold heists, he never spent a single night in jail until he was arrested in 1932 for tax evasion. He was convicted the following year and was sentenced to eight years in federal prison. He died just two months before he was scheduled to be released. Okay. No, no, no. Just read. I read that already. Gangsta nabbed at Moon Lake residence. Mickey Malone arrested right at his luxurious Moon Lake property. Mickey Malone, a Philadelphia businessman, long considered by police to be a bootlegger and a racketeer, finally felt the sting of the sword of justice when he was arrested this morning in his house in Moon Lake. Careful to keep Malone's attack dogs at bay, agents from the Internal Revenue Service and the depart... Oh, well, this is unrealistic. Cops would never not murder the dogs. Of Justice raided the lakefront home at dawn, catching Malone and his henchmen completely by surprise. Within seconds, Malone was handcuffed. Wearing only an overcoat over his pajamas, he was swept out the door and into a waiting car. He was driven directly to Philadelphia, where he was jailed on charges of tax evasion and conspiracy to violate prohibition laws. The police had been wise to Malone's criminal activities for years, but three previous attempts to incarcerate him failed miserably, when Malone's shadowy associates, through bribes and threats, forced prosecution to wit witnesses to recant their stories. This time, federal agents intended to rely on ledgers and tax returns to prove their case. Since 1927, it was determined <clears throat> determined that even income gained through illegal means is taxable. Authorities have been eager to use this ruling to make thugs like Malone pay for their crimes. Mickey Malone's been making us look like a fool for a long time, declared the Bureau of Investigation agent, Waldo Mathias. But today, the good guys finally got the last laugh. Malone loudly and repeatedly proclaimed that he'd done nothing wrong as he was led to jail. However, his protestations of innocence ended abruptly when, apparently not wishing to be photographed in his pajamas, where Malone took a swing at a press photographer. He was quickly subdued. Hi! Hi, Vale! Ha <laughs> ha hi! Twirls my hair. Hi! Fuck you for what you exposed to me this morning. I'll kill you. Love you. <laughs> okay, thank God. I had a I had a brief moment. I had a brief moment of panic that this was gonna be some like nasty nasty ass cis shit. But no, it's it's puns about Dragging Lake. Okay. Emily's Moon Lake Antiques. Dragging Ban is a drag for Pennsylvania treasure hunter. You know why. I didn't have to know. I didn't have to know about the voice dub project, Vale. You didn't have to do this to me. It sucks so much, Vale. <laughs> it sucks so much. Oh my god. At least that's been the experience of Emily Griffin, known her wait, oh god, this is this is this is multiple decades in the future. I need to drop the, the tone. Of Emily Griffin, owner of M's Emporium on Moon Lake in central Pennsylvania. For the past ten years, she's been dragging a heavy net back and forth along the bottom of the lake and covering and bringing to the surface relics from the... 1920s. I've dredged up everything from diamond tiaras to skeleton keys to full bottles of French cognac, said Griffin. It just blows my mind what these people would drop uh, back then and never bother going back for. One of Emily's finds, an Art Deco bracelet. She was referring to the wealthy guest of gangster Mickey Malone, who built a home on the lake in 1925 and threw large raccoon parties almost every weekend. Because his guests would travel to and from the boat house by boat, personal items were lost overboard with great frequency. Miss Griffin estimates that she has made close to $20,000 selling her fine stand tea hunters and tourists. But last week, her windfall came to an end. The county in which Moon Lake is located passed an ordinance making the recovery of objects from the lake bed illegal. 
The ban arose from the fact that the bottom of Moon Lake is composed of unusually fine sand. When disturbed, it clouds the water, sometimes for days, posing a threat to the aquatic plants and, and fish that otherwise thrive there. Park ranger Jeff Akers, who oversees the state park surrounding the lake, initiated the ban. The eco-balance of Moon Lake is simply too delicate to ignore, he contends. But Miss Griffin begs to differ. The whole thing's just plumb ridiculous, she says. You know what all that stuff down there is doing right now? It's rusting, rotting away, polluting the water. Heck, by getting it out of there, I'm doing the country a favor, the county a favor. Unfortunately, the county doesn't see it that way, and it appears that Miss, uh, Miss Griffin will have to abandon what had become a, ple a pleasantly profitable hobby. Oh, I don't know, she shrugs. I can still sell the stuff that washes up on shore. And that happens, you know, especially after a good storm, so I may be down, she says, eyes twinkling, but I ain't necessarily out. Money won't get flushed down this toilet. Watch the Septics Roadshow, Monday nights on the Plumbing Broadcasting Service. Check your local listing for broadcast times. Wow. I can't believe that Nancy Drew invented Super Toilet. Well, that was all something kind of like You're enlightening. Back. I finished putting all those envelopes in order. Excellent. Thank you, Miss Drew. And to show my gratitude, I've got something for you. It doesn't involve Roman numerals, does it? No, it's an honorary junior park wow, ranger. Wow, great. Thing. I keep them on hand so I can give them out to children whom I see demonstrating respect for park rules and regulations. A little bit of positive reinforcement. I'm gonna smack that shit out of his hand. Unfortunately, I don't get to give them out that often. Oh, gee, thanks, Ranger Acres. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Bastard. Hold on, dog, 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 dog. I don't like how it kind of looks like he's given the dog a bowl full of, like, caramel squares. so bad. It's so fucking bad. Nice junior park ranger pin. You must really be on Acre's good side. I didn't put it on me. Guess I'll see you later. Keep on trucking. Do you have a flashlight? How you holding up? Guess I'll see you later. Always a pleasure. Okay, I probably have to call... Probably have to call my host and ask if she has a flashlight, and then she'll say no. But you can get a flashlight from the light flash, flashlight, flash, light. Hello? Hey, Sally, it's Nancy. Nancy, hi, how's it going? That Emily Griffin is quite a character. How well do you know her? I feel like I've known her all my life. She's so open and friendly. She likes to make it sound as if Moon Lake used to be a major hangout for criminals and degenerates, which isn't really true and irks some people around here no end. But I figure she's just trying to make a buck. I could really use a flashlight. Is there one around here someplace? You bet. Look in the kitchen. The batteries might be a little iffy, though, but there's always M's Emporium. Are you aware that you're the proud owner of your very own cemetery? Yes. When the realtor told me there was a cemetery on the property, I went, ugh. But when I saw how far from the house it was and how small it was, I decided I could live with it, as it were. So you didn't go out there much? Uh, no. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay. The big ass flashlight. God damn. Just what I needed. Just what I needed.
could be mice making that sound. Hmm. It's blocked. It looks like a tiny hole. Huh. What's the combination? I don't fucking know. What's this say? M.M. Hinge. Well, you heard the mimic. You've been pinched. William Akers? I wonder if he's related to Jeff Akers. Philadelphia Gazette, Thoughts on Thuggery by Ethan Collier. The truth about Mickey Malone, as told by his most trusted employee, William Akers. Mr. Malone has never spent a night in jail, and he never will, said William Akers. And you know why? Because he's just an ordinary Joe trying to run an... Ordinary business. He said that with such conviction, for a moment, this reporter honestly thought Akers was talking about somebody other than Mickey Malone, the notorious gangster. But I was standing on the porch of Malone's getaway home at Moon Lake, having bushwhacked through the thick brush from the east side of the lake to avoid detection and probably eviction by these guards. And I was talking to the man who, according to police, is the only person Malone trusts. I ought to know. I see him every day, Akers went on. He doesn't deserve all the grief you newspaper hacks give him. He's a rich man because his laundromats are fine establishments, and people like to wash their clothes there. All this talk about him being a bootlegger is just plain hogwash. When I asked if I could talk to Malone, Akers said Malone was out walking. Like I said, he's an ordinary guy who likes to do ordinary things. When I asked him if I could wait for him, he said, what for? Anything you want to know about Mickey or Mickey Malone, I can tell you. I've worked here for him for 15 years. When I said all I wanted was the truth, he said, then you're in luck, because that's what I just told you. And now I suggest you leave. Mickey's a swell guy, but he's got these big, four big dogs, see, and sometimes they don't mind so good. I took the hint and left, but I struggled as I struggled to get through the brush to get back to my car, I realized something. Akers hadn't told me the truth about what Mickey Malone did, I knew that, but he had told me an important truth when it came to what Mickey Malone was. Mickey, uh, someone who had at least one extremely loyal employee. I ask you, good citizens of Philadelphia, how many so-called legitimate businessmen can say this, the same thing? Tomorrow, reflections on Houdini, master magician! <laughs> That's that's cute as a follow up to two games ago. Okay, good, I can now open it. Uh fuck. Right, I wanted to talk to Red. Wanted to get an eye. The moon's so bright, I won't need my flashlight. The moon's so bright, I gotta wear shades. I wasn't planning to use my flashlight, but okay. How's the bird watching coming along? I just can't seem to find a red tailed hawk. Any suggestions? Well, there's gotta be lots around here. You haven't been going around wearing sunglasses and earmuffs, have you? Where am I most likely to see one? Well, according to my bird map, they like to nest in the big tree that's just to the southwest of the Malone house. I suggest you park yourself nearby and wait. Bound to spot one sooner or later. See you in a while. Just remember, eyes open, mouth shut. It's not safe to take the boat out at night. I'd better wait until daylight. Okay, so that's a spot to, to hunker down. It's such a pity Kitbox isn't here, considering this one's set in home state, Pennsylvania. Wait, why'd I pick nighttime? Why'd I do that? I just narcolepsied the full 24 hours and I didn't have to. I 
to stop saying that. It's not, it's not what it is. Well, I don't see any hawks, but this is probably the tree Red was talking about. At least it was the tree. Kia! That sounded like a hawk. There it is. I better get a picture before it takes off. Hey, what is that hawk standing on? Oh, that looks like a speaker. Huh? Oh. I better get out of here. <gasps> My arms and legs are tied. I How can't move. How did I move. see that? At least I can kick. If I could just get that scythe down, I could use the blade to cut the rope around my wrists and free my hands. over a gnome and didn't notice. I can't just let this thing burn up. I've got to put it out. Fire! 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 Oh my god! Remember, after you've been knocked out, tied up, and left in a burning shed, put up the fire. I can't just let this thing burn up. I've got to put it out. What in blazes happened? I saw the fire from my platform and came running. You weren't in there playing with matches, were you? I was looking at birds, and then I noticed something on the house, and the next thing I knew I was locked in the tool shed and somebody was setting it on fire. Whoa, you're not making much sense. Probably smoke inhalation or something. Come talk to me after you've cleaned yourself up and gotten some sleep. I need to tell you something. Somebody tried to kill you? I didn't say that. I mean, somebody yes. Somebody knocked you out, locked you in a shed, set it on fire, and you think they were, what, just pulling a prank? Wake up and smell the hostile vibes, Nancy. I guess it's just hard for me to believe that anybody would consider me to be that big a threat. I should have never let you stay there by yourself. Sally, I'm fine. I feel bad about your tool shed, <laughs> though. Fine! Who cares about the shed? It was full of junk anyway. I'm glad to be rid of it. That's kind of the way Ranger Akers saw it, too. He showed up right after the bird watcher did and ticketed me for burning refuse in a manner that endangered park property. Ah, uh, that man is insufferable! Emily was nice, though. She came by right afterwards and wouldn't leave until I drank the tea she made for me. Look, Nancy, well, one weird. more time. If you want to leave, just say the word and I'll come get you. Sally, one more time. I'm fine. Well, then promise me you'll be careful, okay? I promise. I'll be in touch. You better. Okay. Uh, not every game, but it like does happen. Hello there. I owe you an apology. After you came up here looking for those red tails, I gave my map a closer look and realized it was more than 50 years old. Reason you can't find them is probably because their favorite nesting tree is gone. Finding that hawk's gonna be harder than I thought, so why don't you just give me back my camera and I'll take it from here. It didn't get burned up in that fire or anything, did it? 
Somebody clobbers me over the head and then tries to barbecue me, and all you're worried about is your camera? It's a very expensive camera. <laughs> never noticed those cans. I never noticed those gas cans before. I ran out of gas. So much for being prepared, huh? Well, that's all I wanted to tell you. I'm sure you've got places to go, things to see, people to pester. You'll be happy to know that I did get a picture of a red-tailed hawk. So here's your camera back. I got all the birds. Thank you, Nancy. Nice work. You're a credit to your generation. See you in a while. Just remember, eyes open, mouth shut. Uh, so I think I remember who is actually responsible in this game, but setting all of that aside, um, going purely based on, like, Whitlard's Nancy Drew facts, uh, as of right now, because he's the most suspicious person, he's the least suspicious person. Like, that, that, that is a lot of sus to shove into one, <laughs> into one scene. for knocking me out and trying to kill me? Is that no? The fuck, Vale? Uh, yes, right up until the final game where they mysteriously fired her for bullshit reasons and then put out, the, and then, like, put out a dog shit game that they've never had a follow-up on. A dog shit game that like half the staff finally left beforehand and nobody's happy about. Looking forward to that one. You're back. Sorry to bother you again, but did those results from the water test come in yet? Uh, there's something here for you from the State Department of Health. So yes? So, yes? Also, okay, I misunderstood, Vale. I apologize. Do not drink the water from your well. Initial oh my test. Gosh, not only is the water bad, but it seems like the well may have been contaminated deliberately. Initial test found high levels of arsenic in the sample you sent us. While not unusual to find trace amounts of arsenic in wells in your area, the amount in your sample far exceeds standard safety limits. Therefore, the water in your well is unsafe for any purpose. Further tests have been requested. They will take two weeks to complete. You'll be informed as to what, if anything, they uncover. I wouldn't go jumping to conclusions without proof, Ms. Drew. I'm sure there's a far less melodramatic explanation. I found this old picture in Sally's house. Do you know who these people are? The man is Mickey Malone, I know that. I'm guessing that this is his girlfriend... Vivian Burnett, I think her name was. And judging by the year of that brand new Ford in the background, I'd say the picture was taken in 1928. She was probably as familiar with Malone's house and his dogs as he was. Think there's any chance she's still alive? Tell you what, Miss Drew. Why don't I go through my files and see what I can dig up on this mystery woman? I'm a busy man, but like I always say, I'm here to serve. Another important uh, point, Seraph, uh, because I don't know if you've been in one of the previous streams where I've mentioned this, is the other thing that's notable about the voice actress is that, well, she's done a whole lot of shit in very, very many games and, like, you know, toon cartoons as well. Um, but to me, and from my era of growing up, uh, most famously, she is the Sonic Adventure 2 voice for Rouge. I found a newspaper dating back to 1927 in Sally's house. 
Since you're kind of an expert on the history of Moon Lake, do you mind if I ask you some questions about Mickey Malone? Not at all. It... What do you know about a man named William Akers? I know that he was Mickey Malone's right-hand man. I also know that although we share the same last name, he and I are most definitely not related. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Dog, 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 dog. Dog. Slowly. Okay. Check in with fucking M. How you holding up? I found an old newspaper in Sally's house that contained an article on Mickey Malone. It really got my curiosity going. What else can you tell me about him? Person you should talk to is Jeff Akers. He's got this historical museum thing going out at that ranger station of his. Guess I'll see you later. I guess you will. Oh, back to the house. Uh, it depends on the crime. Like, if it was a crime where you didn't hurt anyone but some rich fucks, and it would be an extremely cop thing to report you, uh, then I don't give a shit. If you tried to kill me, that would be a different matter. Right, let's gonna use the phone to try to get a direct hint on what I should poke at next. Also, it's been a bit, and while I've been very lucky, I don't wanna take that chance. That said, this has been go like this has successfully been running for a couple hours, and I'm very relieved because that means it's very likely the crash. Oh, the crash was just um from the issues with opening and closing the window repeatedly earlier. Nancy, how's it going? Hey, Bess. How'd you know it was me? All Hello, right, Denise, I have course. Just any. another of my many talents. You are so full of it. She got caller ID, Nancy. So now, instead of hanging up on the geeks that always call her, she just doesn't answer the phone. Very funny. So what's up? Believe it or not, on some nights, this house gets attacked by a pack of dogs. Sally's so scared of them, she left me here by myself. Did you say dogs? She couldn't have, George. Dogs don't attack houses. I don't know why my brain just mentally filled in that sentence with dogs don't exist. They were definitely dogs. They came out of nowhere and started leaping at the windows and scratching at the doors like they wanted to get in. Maybe that was just their way of being friendly. <laughs> These dogs were not friendly, believe me. And they had glowing yellow eyes. A bird watcher I ran into said they were ghosts. Ghosts? The man who built Sally's place on Moon Lake was a gangster. The bird watchers said that the ghosts of his dogs show up every time someone new tries to live here. The place is haunted by ghost dogs? On like Moon there's Lake? such a thing as ghosts. But it does sound like you've got another mystery on your hands, Detective Drew. There's a private cemetery in the woods out back. Malone and his dogs are supposedly buried there. Creepy. And there were paw prints in the cemetery. Fresh paw prints. Are you sure you're going to be all right there by yourself? We'd volunteer to drive out there and keep you company, but unfortunately my car's in the shop, and you know what a scaredy cat George is. That's okay. There's really no room, and believe me, living conditions here are pretty primitive. Scaredy cat, huh? You're gonna pay for that remark, dear cousin. Why did they write them like that? Why did they write them like that? Why did they write them like Neptune and Uranus and the Sailor Moon dub? 
Moon Lake is gorgeous, but it's so remote. Gorgeous. The park ranger is the closest thing they have to a sheriff around here. Park ranger? What's he like? Which, as we all know, is Bess's way of saying, park ranger? Is he cute? Not true, George. Nancy thinks everybody's cute, so what will be the point? Anyway, Nancy, you Bus? were saying? His name's Jeff Akers. He's very helpful, polite, efficient, knowledgeable. Sounds boring. In fact, he probably knows more about the area than all the other residents of Moon Lake combined. Sounds very boring. What's he know about these alleged ghost dogs? He thinks they're just plain old dogs that for some reason like to run around at night scaring people. And what does Detective Drew think about the dogs? I think Sally had good reason to be scared of them. I don't blame her for leaving. Which leads me to think that maybe that was the whole idea. Somebody had those dogs attack Sally in order to scare her away? Why would anybody do that? She was there for less than a month. You'd have to be a total creep to make enemies that fast. And Sally's one of the nicest I people mean... I know. Ooh, Nancy. Speaking of cute guys, Frank and Joe Hardy called. I filled them in on where you are and what you're doing, and they're dying to hear from you. I mean, um, Vale, I don't know if you saw uh, the last game... But I did have contact with a uh, a quirky artist gal who sounded completely fucking infatuated with me. So you're not necessarily wrong. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what are they up to? Compared to you, nothing. As I was telling them about this latest case of yours, I could hear them turning green with envy right through the receiver. Their number is 280 five 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 four eight six five best didn't recognize it when they called and almost didn't answer the phone good thing my cousin here has a memory like an elephant huh what's that supposed to mean call them nancy they're dying to hear from you but remember frank's cute and all that but george and i want to hear from you too yeah no fair discussing the case with them from now on and not with us promise you'll keep us up to speed <laughs> i promise this bird watcher I met has got me taking pictures of birds for some survey he's doing. He's a bit of a grump. Does he live nearby? No, he just kind of hangs out in the woods. In fact, I only see him at night. Interesting. He's in the woods at night. The dogs are in the woods at night. Could he have had a reason for wanting Sally out of the Malone house? Maybe. From what Ranger Akers told me, Red would like everybody around here out of their houses. He thinks there's too many people at Moon Lake and it's ruining the bird watching. Ranger Akers called him a fanatic. Fanatic equals suspect in my book. It's okay, Vale. Like, if you can make it, you can make it. And that's fun. And if not, don't worry about it. Get this. It turns out that Jeff Akers will be one happy park ranger if Sally sells her Moon Lake property back to the bank and they wind up selling it to the parks department. You think he might be responsible for all this ghost dog stuff? He has a motive and he has a dog, although it doesn't look at all like the dogs that have been scaring Sally. But it shows he knows something about dogs. Better pull out your suspect list and pencil him in, Nan. I still say you guys should lighten up on him. You two would get a kick out of the woman who owns this little store on Moon Lake. I know how you like milk. She's a real country gal. We got this deal worked out where if I need something she carries, she'll let me do little chores to pay for it. What kind of little chores? Oh, like collecting bugs and worms so she can sell them to fishermen as bait. Sounds delightful. Unfortunately, she may not be as harmless as she seems. Why do you say that? She also sells antiques from the 1920s that she finds in Moon Lake. Is that bad? If she's been getting them by dragging the lake in front of Sally's house, it is. That's illegal. You know what that means. It means Emily Griffin has you made my suspect means. list. Because if she is breaking the law, she'd want the Malone house to stay empty so she can keep dragging the lake without anybody seeing her. Did I mention that all the water in Sally's house comes from a well? Ew, really? Does it taste like rotten eggs? Not all well water tastes like rotten eggs, Bess. I don't know if it does or not. Because the well is so old, I need to get the water tested before I drink it. Good plan. Nothing will wreck your day faster than a nice tall glass of contaminated water. I think somebody may have deliberately put poison down Sally's well. Yikes! What makes you think that? The Department of Health found unusually high levels of arsenic in the water sample I sent them. Somebody's trying to poison you with arsenic? They said that? It's apparently not unusual to find some arsenic in well water. 
So somebody could be trying to poison you. But you don't know for sure. Right. And they may not be trying to poison anybody. They may want to contaminate the well just enough to force Sally to either go to the expense of digging a new one or forget the whole thing and leave. And because arsenic is found naturally in well water anyway, you may never know for sure. Bummer. I found the coolest old newspaper. It's from 1927, and on the front page is an article about Mickey Malone everything. and a man named William Akers. Akers? Any relation to park ranger Jeff Akers? <laughs> when I asked, Jeff Akers said that it was just a huge unfortunate coincidence. According to the paper, William Akers was Mickey Malone's most trusted employee, his number one go-to guy. Where'd you find it? It's... You know how I always seem to wind up in houses with secret passageways? Sometimes I think they follow you around. Well, I found these hidden stairs leading from the living room into the cellar. What's down there? That's what's weird. The stairs led down into this empty space. There's some kind of safe in the wall and a set of stairs leading to a door that goes outside, but that was it. Hmm. Why would Malone bother hiding a staircase if it didn't go somewhere important? I'm... Playing through these chronologically, I kind of loved how how there isn't actually much gap between the games. It's literally Nancy just whether she's going to a new place because she knows there's a case or it's just going to chill. She just constantly, there is always mystery going on around her. She is cursed. I could sure use a nice big hint right about now. Try to figure out the combination to the lock on the wall safe. Who knows? Today's date may turn out to be a very lucky one for you. And one of many very unlucky ones for Mickey Malone. Hmm. Bye, you guys. Don't be a stranger. Take care. Hey, Joe. It's Nancy. Nancy? How's it going? Uh, no, wait. Don't answer that. Talk about the weather or something. The weather? Yeah. That'll give me time to grab the other phone and take it outside. Frank's washing the car. He'll kill me if he misses anything. Uh, here, wait a sec. Take a break. It's Nancy. Hang on. He's putting the hose down. He's drying his hands. He's walking over. Nancy, hi. What's up? Bess and George say you've got another mystery on your hands. Or should we say, on your paws? They told you about the dogs? They told we you We made on them tell us everything. Pumped them dry. As you may have guessed, uh, we're not exactly rolling in detective work here. Uh, so you're living vicariously through me. It's not the first time, sad to say. What conclusions have you reached so far, detective? <laughs> we made him tell us everything. We sucked him silly. If nothing else, those ghost dogs are very well trained. I'm watching to see who owns and or trains dogs around here. Good plan. But don't forget, a really smart perpetrator is going to make it look like he or she has no connection to dogs whatsoever. But then a really, really smart perp might have dogs all over the place and not bother to hide it, because he or she would figure you'd never suspect anyone so obvious. Huh? Emily Griffin doesn't seem to have any dogs. Uh-oh. Move her up on your suspect list. I'd move her down. You know, Joe, something tells me we're not helping. I'm convinced that someone is using those ghost dogs to scare Sally into abandoning Malone's house. If I can just figure out why, I might be able to figure out who. Never hurts to look for motive. Malone and his four dogs are supposedly buried in a little cemetery near the house. They've all got headstones inscribed with when they were born and when they died. That's interesting. Did Malone have family? Not that I'm aware of. Then who had the tombstones inscribed? That's exactly what I was wondering. Sounds like this latest puzzle of yours is still missing a few pieces. I seem to be getting nowhere fast. Anybody have any suggestions? We can probably come up with a few, but we're not going to make it easy for you. After all, it's your case, not ours. Try to figure out the combination to the lock on the wall safe. Who knows? This could be your lucky day. And an unlucky day for Mickey Malone. Okay, all right. Well, when all Later, four guys. of you are watch making the dogs. same hint. Just watch out, period. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, 
Bye, Jelly. Get the stream to say hi. Okay, um, presumably my PDA will say the date in here somewhere. Impaled Hawk, oh, uh, unlucky day. Oh, well, okay, if you're just gonna spell it out, unlucky day was 012932. Okay, what I probably need to do is like Oh wait, hold on. Zero one two nine three I bet those were deer mice. Probably William Akers, 1933 and 1942. Speakeasy. April 29th, 1933. Today, Mickey went to the prison, but they, when they were walking into the paddy wagon, he told me to take care of his dog. And when the time came to do their tombstones like he told me, uh, do their tombstones like he told me, then he whispered to me to look under the Victoria and the Speakeasy in Moon Lake. He said I'd find a map to the gold he stole two years ago. Then they should shoved him into a wagon and told him that that was that. And that was that. Poor Mickey. How's the guy who never spent one night in jail supposed to spend eight years in prison? He'll never make it. I think he wants me to have the gold because deep down he knows he's never coming home. Anyway, I looked under the uh, Victorola and found the map. The problem is, there's nothing on it except a bunch of lines and the words, the dogs will lead the way. There's no X marking the spot or directions or nothing. But I need the money bad. My wife and baby haven't had anything, de anything decent to eat in months. So I'm going to pack them up and move to Moon Lake permanently so I can spend all my time looking for the gold. May 4th, 1933. Mickey never told me outright that he was the guy who pulled off the hole in the floor gold heist. He always said the less I knew, the healthier I'd stay. But according to the papers, a bunch of the gold was stolen off a moving train right under the noses of about a dozen Pinkertons. Oh, fuck yeah! God damn, Mickey! Mickey must have greased somebody's palm real good and got him to cut a hole in the floor of the boxcar. The gold was going to be shipped in. After the gold was loaded, one of his boys crawled under the train and pulled himself into the boxcar. Then when the train was moving, he dropped the gold down the uh, hole under the tracks. Mickey's boys picked it, picked it up and got away clean. Nobody ever suspected Mickey was behind it. So what I'm looking for is 20 gold bars. The paper said altogether they weighed around 600 pounds. The question is, did Mickey hide them in one place or did he spread them around? He hid them all in one piece. He must have buried them, but where? Just a, I just thought of something. Maybe Mickey trained his dogs to go to the gold if he'd say the right word. I'm gonna go. I'm going to try saying gold to them tomorrow and see what happens. July 14th, 1933. I've said every word I can to th I can think of to all the dogs, but they haven't led me anywhere, except around in circles. I spent the last month following them around. First Xander, then Venus, then Lucy. I don't have to follow Iggy, because all he does is sleep on the porch. So it looks like I'm going to have to start digging. I'll dig under the porch first, seeing how that's where Iggy always is. October 21st. A month, after, a month ago, I started working on as a handyman over in Lewiston to make an ends meet. So even though I'd stop by Miss Mickey's every day to feed the dogs, I can only look for the gold at night. I dug all around under the porch, but didn't find nothing. I'd marked the porch once the map was Joe big. Akers? Emily said Jeff Akers' father was named Joe. Maybe Jeff is related to William Akers after all. On the map with a big eye for Iggy, because that's the place he always leads me to. I was so busy digging last Tuesday night that I almost wasn't there when my son was born. 
We're calling him Joe. His big sister is real happy. She says baby Joe is just like the dolly she's always wanted, but we could never afford to get her. Truth is, we can't really afford Joe, neither. I keep writing to Mickey, asking him to please tell me straight out where the gold is, but he never writes back. I'll just have to keep digging. Leavenworth Prin Prison, Leavenworth 48, Kansas. September 9th, uh, 1935. Now I spend all my free time digging in the woods. I dig around everything that could be a landmark. Logs, rocks, tree stumps, but I never find nothing. Plus, I keep getting lost. The paths look so much alike, especially at night, that I spend most of my time trying to figure out where I am. So last Sunday, I memorized the way to the cemetery. It's L-R-R, L-L-R-R, L-R, L-L-R, L-L-R-R, L-R-R-L. February 11th, 1939. Even though Mickey never allowed the dogs in the speakeasy or the tunnels, I've been looking there for the gold because I looked everywhere else I can think of and got nowhere. Last week I found out that Mickey changed the passcode to the spigots in the speakeasy. This got my hopes up because the way I figure it, why would Mickey change the code without telling me unless he was hiding something? When I finally figured out the new code, I didn't find nothing in the tunnel that opened up that wasn't there before. Why Mickey spent all that money on pictures of those dogs of his, I'll never understand. March 2nd, 1942. I give up. Mickey's dead and so are all his dogs. I'll never find the gold. I got a good job offer over in Harrisburg and I'm gonna take it. Little Joe and Sarah deserve a better life than they've gotten so far. It's high time Callie got a nice house and a husband who doesn't spend all his time chasing after something he can't find. But I'm leaving this journal here because who knows? Maybe someday I'll suddenly remember something. Mickey said and it'll finally hit... Uh, Mickey's... Remember something Mickey said, and it'll finally get hit me where he hid the gold. Maybe I'll come back here and find it after all. But in the meantime, I got my family. They're what's important. They're treasure enough. They were the treasure I made the whole time. The dogs will lead the way. I wonder what that means. Okay, so then, do I have to turn all the way back to the beginning to read the book? Jesus, it's fine, I guess. Hmm. It's weird. I got all that info about how to protect myself from mice, but they haven't, like... Despite being in a place where mice were, I haven't had to use any of it yet. Whoa, 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 ladder? Well, piss. Elpis. Let's go hit up the park ranger. Good news. I have information on your mystery woman. Amazing. Thank you so much. Is she still Thank alive? You so her name these days is Vivian Whitmore. Woman. She lives in Las Vegas and her number is 702 555 9137. When and why was Malone arrested? I'm sorry, Ms. Drew. As usual, I'm a little pressed for time. If you have more questions, why don't you sit down at the computer and peruse the Moon Lake database of fascinating factoids that I've put together? What happened to Akers and the rest of Malone's gang after he went to prison? <laughs> Fortunately for Moon Lake, they all left and went their separate ways. What do you know about a man named Joe Akers? Why do you ask? <laughs> I understand he used to be the deputy here. So? According to Emily Griffin, Deputy Joe Akers was your father, 
and according to the journal I found, William Aker's son was named Joe. Another coincidence? All right, all right. William Akers was my grandfather. And you don't want anyone to know that. It's not exactly something I'm proud of. My father spent his whole life trying to make people forget what my grandfather was and trying to make sure people who didn't know what he was never found out. I've been doing the same thing. What, badass? You didn't want him to know he was badass? What did William Akers do after Malone was arrested? I'm afraid you're going to have to excuse me, Miss Drew. In case you've forgotten, I'm a very busy man. I apologize for my previous behavior. <laughs> As a park ranger, I strive to keep my personal feelings in check at all times, and that time I failed. It's my duty as a public servant to try to make it up As a to park you. Jedi, I... What would you like to know? What can you tell me about the gold that Malone supposedly buried on his property? As far as I know, it doesn't exist. It's just one of those rumors people want to believe, so they do. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Hello there. Did your grandfather ever find any gold on Malone's property? If he did, he never spent it. He wasn't poor when he died, but he certainly wasn't rich. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. I mean, that could mean he spent it all. Okay. I remember this being a fairly entertaining call, so... If you're selling something, hang up right now. I got an air horn in my hand that could deafen a dinosaur, and I'm not afraid to use it. Holy oh, shit. no, no, please. I'm not selling anything. Believe me. Is this Vivian Whitmore? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You got exactly five seconds to state your business. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Moon Lake, Pennsylvania. I just wanted to ask you some questions. All right. The Moon Lake Park Ranger said you might call, but you have to talk fast. An old friend of mine is flying in today from Florida. And when I say old, I mean old, as in five years older than I am. Don't bother trying to do the math, sweet stuff. You'll hurt yourself. So, that ranger fella said you found an old picture of me. It was of you and Mickey Malone. Do you remember him? Of course I remember him. I remember everything about that time of my life. It was the roaring 20s for crying out loud. One of the most exciting decades in American history. Just because I've got a few years on most people doesn't mean my brain's turned to tapioca, sweet stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Mickey and I dated for five years. Oh, I knew what he was, and I didn't approve, believe you me. But I was young, and we got along so well, and he was so considerate. He always kept birch beer on tap at that speakeasy of his just for me. Do you know anything about the safe that's in the cellar of his house at Moon Lake? You must be talking about the wall safe. That was Willie. He was a guy who worked for Mickey. Did all Malone's employees have their own safes? Not hardly. Mickey treated most of his employees like dirt, but not Willie. He honestly liked Willie. Trusted him. <laughs> and when Willie decided he wanted his what? own safe, Mickey said, What the hey? No one knew the combination, not even Mickey. <laughs> Mostly because Willie was constantly changing it. He was a little paranoid and superstitious. Well, if I recall, he picked the most unlucky number he could think of and used that for the combination. He called it a reverse jinx. Unlucky number? Like what? Oh, like the date that something bad happened. Like when the stock market crashed, or when somebody died, or the address of a house that caught fire, or the phone number of the police, that sort of thing. What can you tell me about Malone's speakeasy? It was in the basement, right there at Moon Lake. 
feds never knew about it, but everybody who was anybody on the East Coast back then, actors, musicians, bankers, politicians, they knew. You weren't big time unless you'd made at least one trip to Moon Lake Mickey's. That's weird. I'm staying in his old house on Moon Lake, and I haven't seen any sign of a speakeasy. Of course you haven't. You're not supposed to. Only Mickey and Willie knew how to get into the speakeasy from the house. The rest of us had to go in and out the regular way, through the cemetery. The cemetery? There was a lock hidden in one of the tombstones in that little cemetery behind the house. You needed a key to unlock it, and when you did, stairs would appear that led to the speakeasy. Do you have any idea how to get into Malone's speakeasy from the house? I sure don't. That saloon was built using two main ingredients, concrete and secrecy. Mickey always bragged that nobody could get in unless he wanted them in, and I do believe he was right. But I'll tell you what, if you sent me that picture of me and Mickey, I'll send you my key. The key to the tombstone? You still have it? It's in the bottom of my jewelry box. I've come this close to throwing it out a hundred times, but it's so small, and the memories it brings back are so big. Well, I just couldn't, as a joke. Mickey had a tombstone made with the name of this federal agent who had it out for him, inscribed on it. That's the one the key unlocks. William Akers, the guy you call Willie. He wrote about looking for the gold that Malone had supposedly buried on his property at Moon Lake. Do you know anything about that? The hole in the floor gold heist. Well, I'll be darned. So it's true? He did bury gold on his property? Truth be told, when Mickey told me he was the one who pulled off that heist and that he'd buried 20 gold bars at Moon Lake, I didn't believe him. I thought he was making it up. See, Mickey and I were on the outs by then. I thought he was just trying to entice me to come back. But if he told Willie the same thing, maybe there's something to the story after all. Do you have any idea where he might have hidden it? Afraid not. Mickey was so secretive <laughs> that the men who completed his house at Moon Lake were not only forbidden to talk about the work they'd done, but they were ordered to leave the state for good or else. But you know, I but you know, think he mentioned a map. Yes. He said he was making a treasure map in that... The dog. Something about those dogs of his. The dogs will lead the way? He was always saying that. In fact, I'm pretty sure he had it engraved on his tombstone. Think, Viv, think. He said he was making a treasure map. May my dogs be your guiding key. also having paintings done of each dog. He made it sound like one thing had something to do with the other, like he was giving me some big important clue. But I just figured he was playing games, trying to lure me back with mystery and intrigue. I told him to buzz off. Maybe I shouldn't have. Did he say what he was going to do with the paintings? He said he was going to hang them in the speakeasy, and I'm sure that's precisely what he did. Can you remember anything about Malone's dogs that might suggest where he hid the gold? I stayed away from his dogs. They made me nervous, always jumping around, barking at this or that. The only one I liked was, uh, oh, what was his name? Iggy. I liked Iggy because he was nice and quiet. He just lay on the porch all day and didn't make a peep. It's been fun talking to you. Anytime. Oh, yeah. Okay, hackers. Time to talk to you again to mail a photo. Hello again, Miss Drew. Am I in for another interrogation? What? I said, I said, Acres. I need you to mail a photo. Oh, you probably heard mail is a mail. How much would it cost to send this photo to Vivian Burnett? As always, I'm here to serve, Miss Drew. Just give it to me and I'll take care of it. I'm sure she'll be very pleased to get this back. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. 
Hello again, Miss Drew. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. to do is and whoops okay it's been a day gonna drive back to acres and I think T should be in Package just arrived for you from Las Vegas. Great, Vivian sent me the key. I'll dispose of the package. I'll dispose of the evidence. Wouldn't want to break any littering laws, would we? Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Okay, so I got the key. And here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna run over to the place where that key needs to be used. Then I, I want to say there's a not strictly speaking small amount of game left. Shit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save us, and for the first time, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take a fucking break, uh, in the middle of, of one of these parts. Hold on. Shut this off. That said, don't go anywhere yet. Because I know for a fact someone else is streaming at the moment. Let me just find... Uh, where's the thing? Where's the thing? Don't touch that dial. Come on. Come on. Where the fuck is it? I swear to God, there's a menu that makes this really easy. Okay, stream manager. Got it. Stop fucking telling me about guest star. Okay. <laughs> Sending us to raid uh, Terraria, and this is a good. This is a good stream. You should. Uh, you should tune in. And God, I don't know. I really do have to sit down and think of a thing to tell people to say. I'll think of one eventually. Have a good time, everyone. I'll probably pick this game back up in, um, on Sunday and wrap it up. See y'all!